The suicide rate in the United States jumped 25% in the years between 1999 and 2016. For women between 45 and 64, the rate jumped 80%. For girls between 5 and 15 years of age, rates of suicide tripled during that time span. Suicide is the 10th leading cause of death for all ages. Not only is suicide on the rise, the cases of anxiety disorders and depression are crippling people at an incredible rate. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the U.S., affecting 40 million adults age 18 and older, or 18% of the population. Globally, an estimated 350 million people of all ages suffer from depression. Depression is the leading cause of disability worldwide and is a major contributor to the overall global burden of disease. Something is gravely wrong. Many, many people have lost hope in just about everything. There is not one nice, easy answer for this problem. Every situation is different, but that doesn't mean that there is nothing we can do. I believe this rise in the suicide rate is not just about individual situations, but reflects an existential emptiness that is beginning to pervade humanity. We not only have to try to help and support each other for the individual situations that people face, but we have to look at how we live and think about life in general and how that could be contributing to this phenomenon. This piece of music, The Power of Hope, is not an answer to this problem but it is an attempt to help. It is not only geared for any individual struggling with whether his or her life is worth living, but for all of us on how we might want to look at what life and hope means to us and to explore the difference between helplessness and hopelessness. We all feel helpless at times, and rightly so, because we have very little control over most of the events that happen in our lives. For example, I'm going to die. I am helpless to stop that from happening. That is a fact. We also feel hopeless at times, which is not the same thing as helpless, and it is not something we can afford to believe. Hopelessness is an opinion, an attitude. It is not a fact. I can think that since I am helpless about the fact that I'm going to die, there's no point in being alive. Nothing matters. Everything is hopeless. I'm doomed. On the other hand, I can also say that though I am helpless about my dying, I still see value in being alive. Hope is not attached to living forever, but to the fact that I can add beauty and inspiration to life. I can find beauty and inspiration from life. There is much that I can do with my time. We might be helpless in many ways in our lives, but we are never hopeless unless we buy into it. Viktor Frankl, a psychiatrist and a Holocaust survivor, discusses in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, one area where we are not helpless, and that keeps us from being hopeless. This area is within us and not from the outside. He said, Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. This is not just mindless, happy talk from a slogan writer. This man went through hell. He did lose almost everything that was important to him. He speaks from experience. Unfortunately, people who are depressed to the point of seriously considering suicide as a choice of dealing with their lives are not functioning well at all. Their brains are chemically affected in a bad way, and often they hear their thoughts telling them to kill themselves. Their ability to make good choices is severely hampered. That does not mean they are beyond reach. In fact, Frankel's premise of his book is that if people can find meaning in their life, the why of life, they will find a way to live that life, the how of life. If they cannot find a why, they are in deep trouble. There are many, many people who cannot find their why. First of all, 
If we want to help each other through this life, we need to listen to each other. Really listen. We need to let others know we love them. We need to actually say that to them. If we have picked up either directly or indirectly the realization that someone we care about is considering suicide, we have to keep on them to get help. No judging, no minimizing, no, how can you feel that way? You have so much going for you. Just because they seem a little better doesn't mean the threat is over. Keep on them to get help. Come from love and support. In a more general sense, we as a people need to find our way to a sense of joy and peace and meaning and most importantly, hope in our lives. We must not let fear, cynicism, anger, and hopelessness continue to dominate us as they have been dominating us lately. Obviously, we must continue to work on changing those things in society that abuse and degrade people. We must also continue to work on our own situations. Most importantly, we must be there for each other. In addition to this, though, we must change the way we think, live, and move through life as it concerns us as individuals. Part of that change is in how we look at hope in general. I believe that for many, hope has become a banal word signifying just wishing for something. I hope I win the lottery or the big game. Now, there's nothing wrong with wishing for a happy ending. Who of us suffering does not want a happy ending? The deeper meaning of hope transcends personal outcomes. That deeper meaning of hope relates back to the spirit of the person. It is the belief that people can not only endure whatever they are facing, they can grow from it and they can find peace within themselves no matter what the outcome. This is obviously very difficult to do sometimes. The anxiety and depression statistics demonstrate that even if people are not suicidal, they are not well. They do not believe they can overcome their setbacks and find peace. However, history is full of stories of people like Viktor Frankl who were devastated by losses and who refused to lose hope. They might have lost someone or something they loved and perhaps knew that they might even lose their own life, but they would not be defeated. This does not mean that they were better or smarter or stronger than others, but somehow they did find meaning and courage and growth from whatever it was they were experiencing. They also believe that the situation as it was did not have to stay that way. They might not be around to see the change, but they were working for that change anyways. The starkness of losing hope is not that people might lose the big game but that they might lose themselves, their spirit, their soul, their dreams, the core of who they are. People who have seemed to have lost all hope need to see a therapist, period. They need the empathy and love and support of friends and family for sure, but they need to get help. Apart from therapy for individual situations, I believe the best way to facilitate this process of changing the way people think about life and themselves and rediscovering hope is through the prism of the arts. Richard Ayer said, Change begins with understanding, and understanding begins by identifying oneself with another person. In a word, empathy. The arts enable us to put ourselves in the minds, eyes, ears, and hearts of other human beings. Hopelessness can be a killer, physically and psychologically and spiritually and emotionally. However, as strange as this might sound, hopelessness can also be a call to action, especially if someone is there encouraging you. It can be the breeding ground for change and action. I believe the arts can play a major role in what direction hopelessness goes. The Power of Hope The following piece, The Power of Hope, is a response to the call for change. It is a statement that we are capable of better. We are capable of helping each other rise above the problems and setbacks that face all of us. We are capable of great love and compassion and resiliency. The power of hope reaffirms Vaclav Havel's statement that hope is a state of mind, not of the world. It is the ability to work for something because it is good. 
and Power of Hope is an affirmation that we can and we will answer that call. The Power of Hope is designed to explore and celebrate through music and other artistic forms how people find and keep that belief, that hope in themselves, in situations that seem hopeless. This hopelessness might come from global events and the unending violence here and around the world. It might be from something like dealing with a life-altering injury or terminal disease or crushing poverty or never-ending bullying and discrimination or losing a loved one. Finally, the power of hope is about celebrating those who have made this journey from hopelessness to hope and who've inspired us to believe that this journey is possible, especially if we are there for each other. It was inspired by all people who have striven to overcome hopelessness in their lives, whether it be in Darfur or Missouri. The author-composer Scott Shepard, Ph.D., believes this piece combines two areas that he is especially interested in and has a great deal of training and experience with. Dr. Shepard has a B.A. in music, an M.A. in mass communication, and an M.E.D. and a Ph.D. in counseling. He was trained as a classical pianist and also played for years with jazz groups. He has been composing seriously since 2009. He also has worked for years with people dealing with terminal and chronic illnesses, people with addiction to alcohol and other drugs, and with people who had lost loved ones. This last group included people who had their children murdered or people whose loved ones committed suicide. He has also worked with children in schools, helping them deal with issues around self-worth and bullying. He has had five books published on these various issues. Much of what he has learned from his experiences has gone into this composition. He speaks now to many types of groups on rekindling their heart and rediscovering their hope. A song of hope. Find the least among us. Listen to their voice. Stories filled with sadness, a life of little choice. Hear the drums beating whenever they try. Feel the rising mantra amid their desperate cry. Hope for the ages as the lyrics dawn. Listen to the music as their song is born. Find the strength and courage to let them sing for you. For they will tell the story of all we need to do. Peace One, Pulse of Pain. When you are living in a world where you are experiencing constant, overwhelming adversity, there is a pulse of pain as constant as the pulse coursing through your body. You have to acknowledge this pulse, this pain, before you can change it. Awareness of what is going on and your resources to deal with this pain is critical for you right now. Don't deny this pain and don't self-medicate it with alcohol and drugs. Don't feed the hopelessness with your own thoughts. Become aware of how this pulse of pain works. Start to see what triggers it and what diminishes it, even if for only a short while. Even though it's very hard to do, you need to believe that this pulse of pain can end. And most importantly, it can end without ending your pulse of life. You need to understand that you can rest in peace without being dead. In fact, resting in peace is sitting on your chair thinking, I feel peaceful. Being dead is being dead. It isn't peaceful. It's dead. Don't go there. If death looks peaceful and a possible way to end the pulse of pain, talk to someone. Your mind is tricking you. Your pulse of pain can end 
while your pulse of life continues on. Many, many people have found that to be true. Acknowledge the pain and the fear and everything else associated with it and believe that you can rise above it. Again, find someone to help you with that belief and who can give you tools to rise above it. It is possible. We hear about the ones that don't, but there are many more who do rise above. Remember, hope is a good thing, maybe the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. Stephen King Do not lose hope. What you seek will be found. Trust dreams, trust your heart, and trust your story. Neil Gimmon Corinzon I am an anthrax, butcher bacterium, warm life destroying. Morpheus, I am a world, space floating, life nurturing. Corinzon, I am a nova, all exploding, planet cremating. Morpheus, I am the universe, all things encompassing, all life embracing. Corinzon, I am anti-life, the beast of judgment, I am the dark at the end of everything, the end of universes, gods, worlds, of everything. And what will you be then, dream lord? Morpheus, I am hope. Neo Gemin. <laughs>before the day. There is a small moment of time after just awakening when the day is still and new and fresh and where there is a feeling of peace and hope and beauty. It might be for only a second or a minute. It might seem like an apparition on a dark night or the hint of a breeze on a sultry day, but it is there. Hope is still there. The challenge is to grasp it before it disappears and to bring it into your heart. Stay aware. Stay open to possibilities. Stay open to that elusive breeze on a sweltering day. One breeze leads to another. 
Eventually, you create your own breezes. It might take a while, but it happens. If you're not sure how, get help now. There are people who can help you create your own breezes. I believe that imagination is stronger than knowledge, that myth is more potent than history, that dreams are more powerful than facts, that hope always triumphs over experience, that laughter is the only cure for grief, and I believe that love is stronger than death. Robert Fulgham. To be truly radical is to make hope possible rather than despair convincing. Raymond Williams. Piece three, something missing. You might believe that something is missing in you, that you are flawed and not capable of dealing with the life you are facing. You are wrong. What you think is missing is actually there inside of you. You are just having trouble finding it. It's easier to just quit looking than to ask for help, especially if you don't believe that what you need is there at all. Keep looking. Get help in your search. Talk to someone. You are worth the effort, even if you don't believe that. You are worth the effort. Just remember that you have survived so far. That is not insignificant. You have survived so far. Maybe that doesn't sound like much, but it is. You can overcome adversity again. Prepare yourself. Get help. Believe in yourself. Get help. Hold fast to dreams. For if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Langston Hughes. Great hope has no real footing unless one is willing to face into the doom that may also be on the way. Norman Mailer. 
Triptych of Icarus by Yara Zribe. We shall find peace. We shall hear angels. We shall see the sky sparkling with diamonds. Anton Chekhov. Part 1. Icarus on his feet. The man's back is classroom straight and alert for not having shouldered any weight. His hair is warm gold for having drunk sea salt and having grazed the noon sun. Mountain top, mountain air. Mountain lungs inhale wide. The man exhales loud. Let the valley hear his breath before it resonates with his sound. The man's feet lift off, no sandbags to hold them. His strides are large, his view long. Man on his feet is young. He has only met sun, air, and sea so far. He knows of the laws of nature, but has not encountered them yet. He has not felt gravity, heat, cold, hunger that hurts. Sensation is still thrill. His cheeks flush deliciously pink as his big eyes take in a bigger horizon. Its lines blur deceptively at its extremes. Wishes look like promises from here. Man on his feet dreams of kicking them off into flight and mistakes that for hope. Wine, girls, and the music in his head turn his strides to a run, to a leap. Triptych of Icarus on his feet, on his toes, on a gust of wind blowing north. The air applauds loudly in his ears, through his nostrils, and dries the sweat on his brow. Icarus is a boy whose bravery is bravado and whose eyes only look forward, up.
piece for moving it. You have to move. You know that on some level, hope involves movement. It is not just about wishing for a happy outcome. It is not just wishing life would change. You have to move toward hope, toward life. The movement might be physical, emotional, or spiritual, or all of them. Even if the movement is scattered and herky-jerky right now, you have to move. Movement says life. Movement says hope. Movement says, I can still make things happen. I can still make things better. The best way to not feel hopeless is to get up and do something. Don't wait for good things to happen to you. If you go out and make some good things happen, you will fill the world with hope. You will fill yourself with hope. Barack Obama. Hope is the heartbeat of the soul. Michelle Horst. Piece five, calm your mind, claim your mind. Hopelessness can feel all encompassing, but ultimately you have to realize that hopelessness is a state of mind. It is an opinion, not a fact. Many people in the last stages of a terminal illness or in concentration camps created hope in their lives. They knew that the physical outcome of their situation would probably not be good, but they also knew that they would not allow their minds to be defeated psychologically, spiritually, or emotionally by that fact. They knew that we all lose at times. You can lose and not be defeated. Helplessness is not hopelessness. Use your mind as an ally, not a foe. Calm your mind, claim your mind.
But hope is no less realistic than despair. It is still our choice whether to live in light or lie down in darkness. Rick Yancey Hopelessness is a belief. A belief is a thought, and thoughts can be changed. They are all the time. Scott Shepard I am fundamentally an optimist. Whether that comes from nature or nurture, I cannot say. Part of being optimistic is keeping one's head pointed toward the sun, one's feet moving forward. There were many dark moments when my faith in humanity was sorely tested, but I would not and could not give myself up to despair. That way lays defeat and death. Nelson Mandela six a caring soul you might believe you are all alone and that no one cares or will ever care about you you are wrong maybe you reached out to someone and were ignored or pushed away that person is not everyone there might be people right now who care about you but you don't recognize it it might be a family member or a friend or a teacher or a religious person there are counselors who care about people like you who are struggling you have to let people in. Don't let your pride block out people who care. There are caring souls out there. They might not be able to fix your problems, but they will help you get through them. They will support you. It is by choice and not by chances that we change our circumstances. Nadia Sahari. I have come to accept the feeling of not knowing where I am going, and I've trained myself to love it, because it is only when we are suspended in midair with no landing in sight that we force our wings to unravel and begin our flight. And as we fly, we still may not know where we are going to, but the miracle is in the unfolding of the wings. You may not know where you're going, but you know that so long as you spread your wings, the winds will carry you. C. Joy Bell, C.
seven, kids. Even at the worst of times, kids can remind you of your spirit. They bring hope alive by their very essence. Kids are like a fine jazz piece. They bring spontaneity, curiosity, and joy. They bring life. The kids start the rejuvenation process, and if you are open to it, you begin to join in. Kids won't fix your problems, but they can help rekindle your heart and your spirit. Hope has a chance. I look in the mirror through the eyes of the child that was me, Judy Collins. The soul is healed by being with children, Fyodor Dostoevsky. Piece 8, at midnight. Sometimes midnight is used as a metaphor for the end, but midnight can also be the beginning, a new chance. Having your back against the wall and feeling that time is running out does not have to be overwhelming. It can be a time that sharpens your senses and focuses your energy. It can be a time of opportunity, even in the midst of a mess. It is never too late to start over. Hope does not leave without being given permission. Rick Riordan. The lunchtime wine fest is like a festering point for hopelessness. The thought of hopelessness can be like a virus. What started out as one person feeling hopeless is now many all agreeing with each other and strengthening their belief in their own hopelessness. 
Scott Shepard. Piece 9, Sprinkle. Sometimes change begins slowly, like a sprinkle before a shower. It teases you. It tantalizes you. Is it the beginning of real change, or is it just a fantasy? Not every sprinkle leads to a shower, but many do. Perhaps this one is real. The rain has to start somewhere. Get ready. Welcome a new start. And indeed, it could be said that once the faintest stirring of hope became possible, the dominion of plague was ended. Albert Camus. I believe in hope, in what is something called radical hope. I believe there is hope for all of us, even amid this suffering. And that's why I write fiction, probably. It's my attempt to keep that fragile strand of radical hope, to build a fire in the darkness. John Green. Piece 10, Rain. Thunder, the storm is coming. But you might be confused. Is this a storm bringing you nourishment or is it a storm bringing you more grief? The energy is fierce. Something is fighting for your spirit. You must engage the energy of the storm. You will make it your nourishment. You will come out of this storm ready to continue on. You begin to feel the hope. Your spirit is coming alive. Even in the mud and scum of things, 
Something always, always sings. Ralph Waldo Emerson. For like a shaft, clear and cold, the thought pierced him that in the end the shadow was only a small and passing thing. There was light and high beauty forever beyond its reach. J.R.R. Tolkien. It is not light that we need, but fire. It is not the gentle shower, but thunder. We need the storm, the whirlwind, and the earthquake. Frederick Douglass. Piece 11, Blues Won't Keep Me Down. Sometimes just when you start to get moving, that old bad feeling of hopelessness comes back. Don't get discouraged. Keep telling yourself that it will not defeat you. This doesn't mean you have to do it all by yourself. 
It does mean that no matter who is helping you and on your side, you have to believe in yourself and you have to take action. These blues might feel like they're on steroids, but they will not keep you down. Get some help. Get your strategies. Carry them out. Get involved with your own life. You have it in you to move past it. I've learned that no matter how inspired, fired up, and motivated you might be, the dark clouds will always set in. Bernard Calvin Cleave Sometimes the dark clouds don't bring rain. They just bring dark, and you must find your way. Scott Shepard Piece 12, awareness. Awareness is the byword. Just as animals at a water hole look up every few seconds to scan their environment, so must you be aware. The awareness might be for threats, both external and internal, to your physical and psychological spiritual existence. The awareness must also be for allies and sources of strength and beauty that are in you and in your environment. Pay attention. Be open. Hope attracts chances. Toby Beta. You cannot swim for new horizons until you have courage to lose sight of the shore. William Faulkner. 
You do not need to know precisely what is happening or exactly where it is all going. What you need is to recognize the possibilities and challenges offered by the present moment and to embrace them with courage, faith, and hope. Thomas Merton Piece 13, The Beauty and Danger of Love and Desire When you are struggling with hopelessness, love and desire can still touch you. The danger is that you might look at the object of your desire as your escape or your answer. Doing that can take your focus away from the work you still must do for yourself. It can also put an unreasonable expectation on your loved one. The beauty of this situation is that your love can also renew your spirit and help you believe in yourself and recover your hope. The balance is precarious. Pay attention. And I sometimes think that a moment of touching is the difference between complete utter despair and the ability to carry on. Eleanor Cameron Life is a hard battle anyway. If we laugh and sing a little as we fight the good fight of freedom, it makes it all go easier. I will not allow my life's light to be determined by the darkness around me. Sojourner Truth I know I've got to enter in the pull of your 
Piece 14. Who knows? Sometimes you just want to find answers to the questions in your life. You want to find someone who can give you those answers. But who knows these answers? There are a lot of people who will tell you that they have the answer. Be careful of those people. The ones who say, here is the answer, just do this. The people who say they will help you find your own answers are the ones to close in on. They are the ones trying to help you, not save you, but help you. Ultimately, those answers are inside of you. It might be tough to see them now, and you might need help to uncover them, but they are there. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. Emily Dickinson Hope is a waking dream. Aristotle We dream to give ourselves hope. To stop dreaming, well, that's like saying you can never change your fate. Amy Tan. Part 2 Icarus on his face The earth smells strongly of moisture and brown. Brown is a smell and a taste. It fills the man's mouth, nose, and every slight crease streaming out his eyes, down his face. Brown lines his eyelashes and infiltrates the frontier between brow and hair, overtaking gold and pink and even the space under his fingernails. Brown is a feeling that creeps into man's closed fists and his firmest convictions. It soaks through his shirt and settles into his bones. Icarus is aware of his ribs, aware some are broken, aware that they hurt, aware that deeper something burns. Man on his face feels more surprise than pain, really, at first at least, at first. Man on his face has never been further from sky, closer to earth. Contact shocks his senses into the purely present and physical. There is no transcendence in this dark opacity, no light on this side of his face. His lungs have been sucked empty from all air, and his back is cold and bare. Triptych of Icarus on his face, on the ground. No movement or sound in this scene. Disillusion like heavy snow falls thick and silent. Man on his face does not protest. He cannot see sky, not that he is looking, but disillusion is not despair. Man does not know that yet, however. Icarus lies still on his face. Until, through the brown, something infinitely small reaches up, irritates his nose. Nothing has changed. Still at one with reality, man on his face touches hope.
Piece 15, The Light. Sometimes you feel like you are lost in the dark. There doesn't seem to be any way out of this mess except possibly one drastic, irreversible action. There is light, though. It might be buried beneath the crud that is happening to you and to your thoughts that have made things worse, but that light is there. And as hard as it might be to believe, that light is in you. In fact, that light is you. Others have realized that and found their way out. Every step toward the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle. Martin Luther King Without a struggle, there can be no progress. Frederick Douglass Peace 16. Rise above. Many people in the depths of their despair have found something to help them rise above it. They sense a rhythm and a strength calling to them. Some people call this strength God or the universal power or perhaps their own spirit that was hiding deep inside of them. When you find it, you will feel it. A new rhythm will have embraced you you will begin the process of rising from the ashes of hopelessness. To love life, to love it even when you have no stomach for it, and everything you've held dear crumbles like burnt paper in your hands, your throat filled with the silt of it. When grief sits with you, its tropical heat thickening the air, heavy as water, more fit for gills than lungs, when grief waits you like your own flesh, only more of it, an obesity of grief. You think, how can a body withstand this? Then you hold life like a face between your palms, a plain face, no charming smile, no violet eyes. And you say, yes, I will take you. I will love you again. Ellen Bass. Where there is no hope, it is incumbent on us. 
to invent it. Albert Camus. Piece 17, starting over. It's one thing knowing something, and it's another thing doing something. Even after you realize that the light is in you, and that you have more power than you ever realize, you still have to begin the process of starting over. You can look at this starting over as a burden or as an incredible opportunity. In fact, instead of seeing it as starting over, see it as starting anew. You are not alone in this journey. The people who have stood by you are with you. You are different than before. It's really a wonder that I haven't dropped all my ideals because they seem so absurd and impossible to carry out. Yet I keep them because in spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart and frank. It's probably my job to tell you life isn't fair but I figure you already know that. So instead, I'll tell you that hope is precious and you're right not to give up. C.J. Redwine. In a time of destruction, create something. 
Maxine Hong Kingston. Piece 18, Stepping Out. Now it's time to try out your new strengths. You're stepping out. You see that there is a difference between hiding and stepping out. It might be a little scary, but so what? You have whatever it takes inside of you. You meet other people stepping out. They inspire you, you inspire them. You flop once in a while. You flop, you get up, you keep going. If you need to ask for help, you do it. The more you do it, the more you believe it. And as I watched him, I knew that in every dark night, there was somewhere a small light burning that could never be quenched. Juliet Marlier. Don't despair. Despair suggests you are in total control and know what is coming. You don't. Surrender to events with hope. Alain du Botton. True hope is swift and flies with swallow's wings. William Shakespeare. When you left, I stayed home and locked the door. I was scared to go out at night. But now I'm stepping out, I'm feeling fine And I know things will be alright Hiding out, staying safe, that's not for me I know life's waiting round the bend That's why I'm stepping out and I'm feeling light I got a heart that's strong and ready to mend Don't tell me that I should take my time don't try and tell me I'm through I'm stepping out and I'm here to stay I'm feeling steady, I'm more than ready So world watch me now, I'm on my way I've been gone for a little while But now I'm stepping out and I'm coming in And I'm bringing with
with me plenty of smiles. Don't tell me that I should take my time Don't try and tell me I'm through I'm stepping out and I'm here to stay I'm feeling steady, I'm more than ready So world watch me now, I'm on my way I've been gone for a little while But now I'm stepping out and I'm coming in and I'm bringing with me plenty of smiles Piece 19, Home Ram Dass says we're all just walking each other home And what is home? Home is where your heart is, your strengths Those who love you and support you no matter what Home isn't perfect, nothing is perfect but you know when you're there, home has what you need to grow and thrive. Everybody has a home team. It's the people you call when you get a flat tire or when something terrible happens. It's the people who, near or far, know everything that's wrong with you and love you anyways. These are the ones who tell you their secrets, who get themselves a glass of water without asking when they're at your house. These are the people who cry when you cry. These are your people, your middle of the night, no matter what people. Shauna Nequist. Of course, the sad truth is that not everybody does have a home team, but you can be somebody's home team. You can be that person. You can't be that for everyone, but you can be that for someone. Scott Shepard.
Piece 20, Soaring. Now you're not only stepping out, you're soaring. You remember that you can soar again. Sometimes you have to choose another way and break from people and situations that are not good for you. Find your own strength. Feel the wind beneath you. Feel the strength that you have. May your choices reflect your hopes, not your fears. Nelson Mandela Don't worry if people think you're crazy. You are crazy. You have that kind of intoxicating insanity that lets other people dream outside of the lines and become who they're destined to be. Jennifer Elizabeth Part 3. Icarus on his back Man turns to his back, gasping for air, rubbing the earth from his face. Pink peeks through the brown, molds into the brown. His hair is syrupy, warm yellow. No longer frightened of this earth he now knows, man stretches his weight into it, his back across it, every cell of his skin fiercely awake. Sensation. No revolt or resignation, just extreme awareness. Touch, smell, sound, taste. Yes, skin can taste. So can soul. Man on his back looks up. There is no boy in this triptych or myth. Just sky, infinite sky. Its infinite stars shower an infinity of life over man. Past, present, future. All present washes over him, his impermanence. Soaking him with love and despair. This is what beauty must be, seedlings growing timidly from the cold ground. He feels them in his back beneath him, in spite of him. Icarus on his back flies. Peace 21, celebrate another day. Another day, another chance. You will celebrate your life again, the good and the bad. You will celebrate yourself, warts and all. 
Celebrate your strengths and your ability to deal with your weaknesses. You're not perfect. Nobody is. But you are you. You are unique. You have something to offer. Celebrate that. Never give up. It's like breathing. Once you quit, your flame dies, letting total darkness extinguish every last gasp of hope. You can't do that. You must continue taking in even the shallowest of breaths, continue putting forth even the smallest of efforts to sustain your dreams. Don't ever, ever, ever give up. Rochelle E. Goodrich Another day Oh,